Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon C100 Mark II product overview. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through some of the new features and functions of this brand new camera, which was designed from input from you guys and users like myself who have been using the original C100. Really great stuff. I'm going to be talking about things like the new OLED articulating display, the new EVF on the camera, the button layout on the exterior of the camera system, and of course, the new Digic DV4 processor, which I'm going to talk to you about right now. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do before we get into some of the external features of the camera system is we really want to talk about this new image processor, which is brand new to the Cinema EOS line. And while this camera shares the same amazing super 35 millimeter sensor that's in the C500, the C300, and the original C100, it is the Digic DV4 that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting and creating our final image with the camera, which is improved over the original C100. So what is this image processor actually doing? Well, we're capturing a 4K image. And then the camera is taking that and it's using a new advanced debayering algorithm. It's taking the RGB channels and breaking it up into three separate 8 megapixel 4K signals. And then that's being taken and actually scaled down to create our final 1920 by 1080 full HD image. And the byproduct of all of this engineering that's inside of the camera, we've got less false colors. We have reduced more, less jaggies in the image, and then we also have less noise, which is allowing the camera now to go to even higher ISOs. We could go to 80,000 on the C100. On the Mark II, we can go to 102,400 ISO. So now that we've gone over that, let's talk about some of the external features that I'm really excited about. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is this new OLED display on the camera. So the improved ergonomics of the C100 Mark II are considerable, and as an owner of two of the original C100s, these are really welcome upgrades to this new camera. And one of my favorite things is the new OLED display, which does a lot of different things, but really one of the major things is that you can put it in basically any position. Tilt it all the way down, tilt it all the way up, and you can also tilt it directly facing somebody. So this is great for spot news coverage, if you're doing webcasts and you're presenting. Now the other thing that I can do with this um, is I can rotate it and put it on the side of the camera system so we can actually look at the image from the side. This is great when you're conducting interviews by yourself and you need to see a reference of the person that you're interviewing and you're off to the side of the camera system. And then I can also rotate this back into the camera body itself and this has a lot of distinct advantages um, to me, and it automatically detects the flip so that all of our menus and everything are right side up. This is great for really two applications, obviously for operating the camera from behind the camera system, but also when we're rigging the camera system to things like something like a free fly systems Movi. We now can see the image. We don't in fact have to have the grip unit on here. And the reason we don't have to have it and I'm just going to move this EVF out of the way for a second and talk to you about that in a minute, is that we have full control of the camera system now from the OLED display. So great functionality there just by using the controls right on the OLED. Now this right here, the EVF, this is the same EVF that's on the C500 and the C300. Another welcome upgrade to this Mark II camera. It's got this 68 degree tilt and it has this really comfortable large eye cup which makes operation very easy and it's also reversible so if you're using it on your left or your right eye you can do that. So these two things alone in terms of usability with the C100 Mark II really are great upgrades but there's some other things on the exterior of the camera system that I want to go over which for me are also big bonuses. So let me go ahead and talk about a few of those. So the first thing over here on the side of the camera body you will see that there are some changes over the original C100. We have these recess buttons for our ISO and gain and our shutter, and these are assignable. There are now up to 17 assignable buttons as opposed to 15 on the original C100. And this just makes it much easier when you're operating the camera to know which buttons you're pushing down here on the camera system. There's also now 
a silent push on these buttons so they don't make a clicking sound like they did on the original C100. And the layout of our buttons has changed slightly because we've now introduced these new buttons on the OLED display and we've moved some things around. So let's just go ahead and talk about some of those. The waveform has now been moved to the back of the camera system and it is our 16th assignable button. Just as a note, we also have on the camera not only the waveform monitor, but the vector scope from the C500 and C300 is now on the Mark II. Our 17th assignable button, which is part of the OLED over here, and that can actually be used in its default for the display, but you can also assign it to a different function. We'll take a look at the SD card slots, and you'll see that they have transparent windows, so you can actually make sure that there are cards inside of there. So that's another nice feature. There's a viewfinder button on the camera system. So you can just press that and it will turn off the EVF if you want it to. So if you're using the OLED, we can actually save power. The new battery release, it's now on the back, which makes it easier to release the battery. And if I rotate the camera system here, you'll see that the start stop record button is now red. It seems small, but it's also huge. There is now a built-in microphone on the exterior of the camera body. And when we're just using the camera in its smallest configuration, we just have the grip unit and the camera body and maybe a small lens, and we have taken off this handle unit, we now have this really, really compact camera that can still get reference audio when you're doing run and gun and maybe when you're in a multicam situation. So in situations where you might be doing multicam shoots or you're traveling a lot, you can now, with the C100 Mark II, add the GP-E2 GPS unit. And this just attaches directly to the hot shoe of the camera system, and then it is plugged into the USB port of the camera. So when you've got these units on your camera systems, then you're getting direction, longitude, and latitude information, which is really valuable in multicam and in stock footage type situations. So one last thing I want to talk about before we jump into the menus with the camera system is external recording. And with this new Digic DV4 processor, which is improving the internal recording of the camera, we can also take advantage of it using this 8-bit 422 external recording option. And so we can use our HDMI out and we can use, in this case, a really small external recorder, which is the Atomos Ninja Star. And we can bypass the internal codecs. We can go to higher bit rates and we can record ProRes externally with the camera. So that's really, really exciting because we get that improved color, we get the reduced moray, the reduced jaggies, all of the things that the Digic DV4 processor gives us, but with external recording as well. So now it's time to jump into the internal menus and take a look at some of those new features. So let's get into that.